What's going on guys and today we're going to be taking a look at SketchUp. So SketchUp is a program where you can create different designs and models and when you first launch you'll be greeted with the screen and it'll say you have different options here. So here you can download and share different models, find plugins and tools and also check out the blog for tips and tricks. So the first thing you want to do is hit choose template or hit the drop down for template. Here you'll be greeted with a bunch of presets. These presets will allow you to create like different models and just choose which one um, best suits your need. So I'm going to be choosing 3D printing and millimeters. Just hit start using SketchUp. So once you're in the SketchUp document, you'll be greeted with one of these little point of reference things or just a little model here. So what you want to do is uh, just select this by hitting it or just by selecting it like that. And you want to click delete. So one of the first things you want to do is go down to window and hit instructor. When here you will get a little description of whatever tool you're you're using currently and it'll allow you to learn more about different tools and functions in the program. So I'll be exiting all this for now. So one of the first tools you'll be using is the line tool. With the line tool, it'll allow you to create different lines, shapes, and connect objects. So first, um, let's create a square. So let's make this square 100 millimeters. As you can see, it has snapped to the green axis. That's one great thing about SketchUp. will allow you to create precise um, shapes by snapping. So to make, you, I could just click anywhere right now and it would lock to that millimeter amount right there at the bottom of the screen. However, if I want to break it precisely 100 millimeters, I can type it in now. I can type 100, click enter. As you can see, it's created a 100 millimeter line. And to continue the square, I, it has automatically blocked to the red axis. For example, say I actually didn't type in 100 right now and I actually hit 80. So if I click it at 80, but I actually want it to be 100, if I don't move the mouse, I type 100, it'll extend to that point. And the program has detected that I, I'm want, I want to make a square. So it is automatically locking to the green axis at 100. So I don't even have to type it in now. And just connect up the sides and you've got a completed shape here. So say I want to turn this into a cube. I can easily do this by first using this orbit because I want to get a better perspective so I can make a cube. So orbit which allows you to just like move around and get a better perspective. So I'm going to choose the line tool again and start from the corner. So in the corner, I'll be able to go up and it automatically locks at 100. So that's a great feature and let's keep on going. Okay, um, we're at 100 again. And if I don't want to be attached to this anymore because I want to go from this point all the way up again. So I just hit escape and then it won't be connected to the original line. Because the program thinks I still want to continue to draw. Hit escape again. And click that. Now say I want to copy this shape down here. All you have to do is just click on that. And click option on your keyboard. I think it might be control for Windows. It'll come up in the bottom of the screen. So just hit option. Then you'll have a little um, square that you can move around. So let's move it to the top. And that's pretty much it. So you've got somewhat of a cube here. And if the faces don't line up, then you can just do that. And then you've got a solid cube. But as you can see, this is uh, this does take quite a bit of time, and there's a way easier way to do this. And the method I'll be showing you is using the extruding tool. So let's delete all these lines that we made, and click this tool here. And this will allow you to allow you to extrude the face from this shape that we've created, and we'll be able to create a quick cube. So let's go to 
Ty let's type in 100 and click enter. As you can see, we have um, a cube here. So, so say I want to erase a couple of the lines here. I can just get the eraser tool here and just start erasing away. And another tool which can be useful here is the pan tool. It'll allow you to move around, pan around in the to get a better view of the image or the object you're creating. So let's say I create an object like that. So as you can see, I'm just creating a different object just by erasing a couple of the shapes and using lines to attach everything together. This is a pretty abstract shape here. So the next thing I want to show you is the move tool. Um, I've showed you this before, but the thing is in SketchUp, whenever you put objects beside each other, they tend to stick. So say I select this face and I move it. As you can see, it's just skewing the object. And that's how SketchUp works. It just connects all the shapes which you put close together or touching together, and it connects them. So let's just hit Escape to get out of that. So here there's a couple more tools such as Arc, 2-point Arc, 3-point Arc, Pi. These pretty much allow you to create different arcs. As you can see, I just created another arc there. And that's pretty self-explanatory. Here you can click and hold and you can also access the different shapes here. So here I have um, rectangle, rotated rectangle, circle, and polygon. With polygon you can create different polygons. Um, I think the best way to create uh, abstract or non-equal polygons is just use the line tool and uh, just work around and you've got a little shape here. So also with circle, you can create different circles of different shapes. And this tool is actually pretty useful. So say um, I have a rectangle here. And I want to make it a little bit bigger. Or I want to add another rectangle on the outside of it. So I can just take this and I can bring it out. It's the exact same rectangle. They're both similar rectangles. So that's really useful, say you want to create some type of tubular structure or something, you can just delete that, hit the selection tool and just delete the center. Say you want to create a pipe, you can just create a cylinder by selecting the circle tool, creating a circle, and then with this tool, you'll be able to make a pipe. So you want to extrude this whole shape outside and then as you can see you've got a pipe here. Another way you can do the same thing is say you have a rectangular prism and you want to make a hole through it. You can use the pencil tool or any other shape and just create a shape right here and I want to knock that out so I just have to use the extrude tool and just line it up with this so um, SketchUp has a lot of snapping features so say I want to create another rectangular prism which is the same height as this pipe all I have to do is create my rectangle and when I'm extruding it all I have to do is line it up to the top of the pipe and they'll be the exact same height so another really useful feature is the ruler. The ruler which will allow you to measure different lengths. So say you're working on a complicated big project and you forgot what the length of an object is. You can just select the endpoint or a line and just measure it out. That way you'll be able to know what the length is. Also the ruler allows you to create guides. So you know how everything you create it snaps to the axes. A guide will almost give you that same snapping feature, but it will allow you to have that snapping anywhere in the whole drawing. So let me just delete all this. And let's create 
two cubes. Comma, separate the dimensions. And let me just extrude this. Okay, so I have a cube here. I can just triple click to select the whole cube, copy, and paste. Okay. So I can use my ruler tool, and with the ruler tool, I'll be able to create a guide from the middle of the cube all the way to here. Say I want it to be 50 millimeters away from the other cube. Just create a guide, then I can triple click the cube here, use the move tool, and move it all the way to the guided area. So guides are really useful, they can make your drawings way more precise. So um, another feature you can use here is the paint tool. This paint tool allows you to apply any colors to the faces or total shapes and objects. So here um, I've added blue to this color, uh, this cube here. And let's add green to this. So you can just color coordinate things or even paint different objects using the paint tool. So another uh, tool that you have here is this little extending tool. So say you have an object here, but you actually need it to be a little bit bigger. You can just take this and skew and change the object to change the dimensions pretty much. And you can do that with 3D and 2D objects. So let me just show you a quick example of that. So say I want to change, say I want to change the way this object is sized. I can just change it uniformly or I can change every single dimension just by using this simple tool. This is really useful if you need to fix some dimensions of an object. As you can see, I made a humongous here. And with scroll wheel, it allows you to zoom in and out. And guys, if you like this video, please subscribe and just thumbs up below. That'll help me out a bunch. Also, if you have any comments or have any questions, just leave them below and I'll try to answer as many as I can. See you in the next one. Bye.